Okay. Good afternoon. I'd like to welcome everyone to the 2020-2021 induction ceremony for the Fairlawn High School's National English Honor Society. At this time, I'm going to turn it over to our Vice President, Alex Hess, for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Okay, thank you, Alex. So my name is Mr. Diorio and I'm the Fairlawn Chapter Advisor for NEHS. The National English Honor Society since its inception in 2013 has been actively involved in language arts endeavors and volunteer work. I would like to take this time to thank the Board of Education, the superintendent, the administration, the faculty and staff, and the students for all the support with this honor society. The National English Honor Society, just to give you some background, it's founded and sponsored by Sigma Tau Delta. It's the only international organization exclusively for secondary students who merit special note for past and current accomplishments. Such benefits for affiliation include academic recognition, scholarships, awards, opportunities for networking with others who share enthusiasm for and accomplishment in the language arts. So what this means is that your membership does not end in high school, that your membership continues throughout your college and post-secondary experience. Our members have tutored across various schools, hosted fundraisers for cancer research, hosted school activities such as the Poetry Slam and the Spelling Bee as well. Even through the pandemic, our members have contributed to society through tutoring, poetry, and various literary publications during this time. Each of the inductees have been deemed exceptional for their qualifications in not only academics, but their genuine love of reading, writing, and serving the community. I wholeheartedly recommend each inductee for membership into Fairlawn High School's National English Honor Society. At this time, I would like to introduce the principal of Fairlawn High School, Mr. Gorski. Thank you, Mr. Diorio, and I see Dr. Pankowitz is here as well as uh, English Department Supervisor, um, and most importantly, our inductees, and I know that, you know, current members as well. Um, you know, I usually prepare remarks for these types of things, um, you know, the honor inductions and the like, but particularly because this is about language. I, I didn't do that. I specifically didn't do that because there's so much more to language than just the word on the page. It's the way in which it's conveyed. It's the subtlety. It's the understanding that a word can fulfill and heal just as much as it can kill or and destroy. You know, there's, there's an old phrase, right? You know, uh, sticks and stones may break my bones, but you know, words will never, will never hurt me. I think it's exactly the opposite. Um, you know, it's the voices that you have, the people that you can influence around you because you have a talent and an ability to speak with clarity in a comprehensive and understandable way is so very important. You know, it gives me a lot of hope um, for 
our community and for our country that you all are the rising generation of leadership because I think it's so sorely needed. So much about our world has changed, but this has not changed. And that is the power of the written and the spoken word. You know, I like to do quotes and I, you know, I like to put quotes in my speeches and, but that's not, that's not what this is about. This isn't about the words of others. This is about how you have internalized the words of others through all the different types of literature that you've been exposed to, that you've sought out on your own, and that you've created in all different genres. Not about what others have written and said, but about what you are going to write and say. That's your legacy. Treat it with care, but know that it really does have an impact and it really does matter. And I appreciate the example that teachers like Mr. DiOrio have set for you and facilitated for you in all the environments in which you've learned. Dr. Pankowitz does an outstanding job as a supervisor of having really meaningful collaboration among all the English teachers here to create this type of environment. So I couldn't be prouder of all of you and I couldn't be prouder of our, of our faculty and staff for the English program that we have here and the opportunity that we get to come together and gather here a little bit and talk more about it. So congratulations again. Thanks for inviting me and thanks for letting me say a few words. Thank you, Mr. Gorski. This time I would like to ask Dr. Pankowitz, Supervisor, Language Arts, Fairlawn District, to say a few words for us. Hi, everyone. I'm so excited to be here. Thank you so much. And I'm grateful for this opportunity to address you, if only just for a couple of minutes. Um, to begin, I'd like to thank Mr. DiOrio, English teacher and National English uh, Honor Society advisor, for listening to his students and caring enough to volunteer his time to make the National English Honor Society at Fairlawn High School a reality. Uh, in addition, I'd like to thank Superintendent Norcia, Dr. Lakatina, of course, Mr. Gorski and Ms. Matina for their continued support of the English Language Arts Department. Next, I'd like to congratulate the students in this virtual room. You're here because you showed prowess as an English student and as a citizen of our school learning community. I implore you to also thank your parents, guardians, mentors, and teachers who have supported you as they should be congratulated as well. As the tradition goes, I'd like to share a brief poem with you. This year, I chose to revisit a poem called Words Are Birds by Francisco X. Alarcon. Words are birds that arrive with books and spring. They love clouds, the wind, and trees. Some words are messengers that come from far away, from distant lands. For them, there are no borders, only stars, moon, and sun. Some words are familiar, like canaries. Others are exotic, like the quetzal bird. Some stand the cold, others migrate with the sun to the south. Some words die caged, they're difficult to translate. And others build nests and have chicks, warm them, feed them teach them how to fly and one day they go away in flocks. The letters on this page are the prints they leave by the sea. So I chose this piece because I felt, felt it's a good model uh, of a writer showing voice and a good message about the potential of our words. As a trade of writing, voice is, de is defined as when writing speaks directly to the reader in a way that is individual, compelling and engaging crafted with an awareness of and respect for the audience and the writer's purpose. With voice, the tone of your writing adds interest to your message and is appropriate for the purpose and audience. To me, I love the way that Alarcon's poem prevents a free-spirited and motivational tone with what seems like boundless opportunities. 
end. The idea of the potential of the power of our words reminds me of the power that this talented group possesses. While we continue to grapple and persevere through complex contexts, it's important to take a moment to applaud your, uh, your accomplishments and how the world needs you to continue on the trajectory of a successful English student. You can grow your writer's voice by reading voraciously books, blogs, or the daily sports page. Read like a writer and reflect on elements of voice that resonate with you. Think about how you and your community relate, if at all, to the characters and topics that you read about. Wide reading and writing will also help you develop empathy that will only make you more responsive to the collaborative situations that you find yourself in throughout your endeavors. Continue to grow your literacy traits, passion, creativity, expression, and analysis. To reiterate and in closing, as a National English Honor Society inductee or member, I challenge you to seek opportunities to grow your voice. Continue to analyze the texts that are all around you and imagine the possibility that Alarcon presents. For them, there are no borders, only stars, moon, and sun. Congratulations again, everyone. Thank you, Dr. Pankowitz. At this point, I'd like to hand it over to my amazing officers who put such care and effort into the society this year. I'm not sure if I could have done, done this myself. There's just, the officers went above and beyond this year and it's through their hard efforts that we now have a yearly scholarship for a senior as, as well as part of our honor society going forward. So I'm going to introduce our co-presidents, Esther Katoff and Rachel Moskowitz. Thank you, Mr. DiOrio. Um, good afternoon, guys. Thank you for joining us today. Again, my name is Rachel, and I've had the absolute pleasure of being co-president of NEHS this year. First of all, we just want to say congratulations to all of you. Um, a big thank you to Mr. Gorski and Dr. Pankowitz for joining us today. And of course, to Mr. Duorio for being here. You say you couldn't have done it without, without us, but we couldn't have done it without you either. So to our inductees, you guys all had something that made you rise above the rest and earned you your place in this honor society. And really we were only able to take the best of the best this year. So you all definitely should be proud of where your hard work has gotten you already. And as students, we know how difficult this year has been for us all. So we just want to applaud you for going the extra mile and putting in the work to continue to pursue your interest and your passion for English. Even though we didn't get to do as many events this year, being a part of NEHS is such a fun and rewarding experience. And I'm so excited that you guys are going to get to have it in high school and beyond. And as I look at you all right now, um, I just feel really good passing on this chapter to you and I know that we're leaving it in good hands. So congratulations again, and I'm gonna pass it off to Esther now. Thank you, Rachel. Likewise, I've definitely had the pleasure of being one of the co-presidents of NEHS this year. As many of you move forth in your high school careers and on, remember your roots and what got you to this point. Moving forward, do not be complacent, resting on your accomplishments and honors or take anything for granted take chances, accept challenges. Within the next year or two, you will all probably be leaving the comfortable, familiar, and friendly hallways and classrooms of FLHS and moving on to college. It is in this new educational environment at this next stage of your life that you should be faced with numerous challenges, but don't worry. You need to leave your comfort zone. In doing so, you may even struggle academically for the first time. You may even fail. And you know what? That's okay. We all need to take risks and leave our comfort zones at one point or another to grow as individuals. Being inducted into the National English Honor Society is a huge honor and the result of a series of choices you each made and will continue to make. You choose to be hardworking. You choose to manage your time effectively. You choose to build relationships and you choose to apply yourselves. Today, the National English Honor Society noticed and recognized the choices you have made. Tomorrow, it might be an admissions counselor, a future boss, or mentor who notices and recognizes your choices. Once again, I congratulate all of you on your acceptance into the first of many fulfilling groups that foster your mind and dare you to think outside the box. Thank you. And now I invite our other officers, 
Alex, Mia, Mona, and Remy to read a poem. Thank you, Esther. So welcome students and faculty. We are so happy that you were able to make it and be a part of the induction ceremony. These students are smart, ambitious, and have put forth a tremendous amount of effort throughout the course of their high school career. To encompass our view of life and what we strive to achieve, we would like to read a poem by Pat A. Fleming called What Life Should Be. We hope that you can take a lesson or two away as well. To learn while still a child what this life is meant to be. To know it goes beyond myself. It's so much more than me. To overcome the tragedies, to survive the hardest times, to face those moments filled with pain and still manage to be kind. To fight for those who can't themselves, to always share my light. With those who wander in the dark, to live with all my might, to still stand up with courage, though standing on my own, to still get up and face each day, even when I feel alone, to try to understand the ones that no one cares to know, and make them feel some value when the world has let them go. To be an anchor, strong and true, that person loyal to the end, to be a constant source of hope to my family and my friends, to live a life of decency, to share my heart and soul, to always say I'm sorry when I've harmed both friend and foe, to be proud of whom I've tried to be and this life I choose to live. To make the most of every day by giving all I have to give. To me, that's what this life should be. To me, that's what it's for. To take what God has given me and make it so much more. To live a life that matters, to be someone of great worth, to love and be loved in return and make my mark on earth. I'm now going to pass it back to Esther and Rachel and we will finally induct our new members. So we've prepared a little slideshow. Um, each of you has your own slide with some fun facts about you. So we're gonna go through that now and induct you all. So here we go. Sarah Rachel Abraham. Laura Barbieri. Devin Baines. Catherine Bazella. John Bednars. Andrew Benavides. Marie Buturishvili. Rebecca Chernovsky. Nicole Cohen. Kimberly Colon Leone. Callie Connolly. Ava Dufino. Sean Drahuzel. Mackenzie Garcia. Benjamin Garfinkel.
Simone Gelman. Ashley Gomez. Anna Marie Hemsley. Christina Hemsley. Melissa Hickey. Erica Leibowitz. Erica Linick. Abigail Montesino. Ellie Portnov. Nicholas Caroga. Radia Rahman. Abdullah Rashid. Andrew Rosenblit. Frida Sanchez. Alana Seltzer. Janum Shaw. Nafi Shahid. Rithiga Sundaram. Edward Trivella. Lauren Wilner. Julia Yanko. Ian Van. Maya Zalowski. And now we're going to pass it on to Mona and Remy to swear you guys in with the oath. Okay, now I'm going to recite the National English Honor Society oath. As a member of the National English Honor Society, I shall endeavor to advance the study of all areas of English and to foster a spirit of fellowship among students excelling in all facets of the English language arts, ever keeping in mind our national motto as our guiding principle, ye lost shall midara, duty goes with honor. The NEHS motto, ye lost shall midara, is Old English for duty goes with honor. 
The motto represents one of the earliest forms of our language. It affirms and celebrates an obligation to use one's gift in service to others. Service to peers, school, and community are part and parcel of the NEHS mission, and indeed in the grammatical structure of the old English phrase, duty actually precedes honor. Before we conclude our ceremony, it is essential to note that the students inducted into this prestigious society are not only being given a title, but rather they are being given an opportunity to not only further enrich their appreciation for the English language, but also to be a leader in their school and community. These students are endeavoring into an association built upon the notions of duty, and for that I commend them. Congratulations to all the 2021 NEHS inductees. We are so proud of you. Thank you all for joining us for this unique induction ceremony.